At this point, I would like to view a short segment of a clip from a film in the Mechanical Universe series from California Institute of Technology. In this film, they're going to derive the equation for the frequency and the period of a simple harmonic oscillator, a mass on a spring. There's going to be some differential equations in it. I don't want you to be concerned about following the details. I'm going to be interested in the results. And they're going to do some illustrations. I think it's a very powerful video clip, and so I think it's worth the seven minutes that we spend watching it. The inexorable law in mechanics is F equals M times A, the second derivative of X. In simple harmonic motion, Force comes from the displacement, x itself, f equals minus kx. Together, these two equations give the differential equation that describes simple harmonic motion. That differential equation refers not only to a mass on a spring, but to any physical system that, when disturbed, is restored toward equilibrium with a force proportional to the disturbance. For example, the pressure of the air in an organ pipe, or the angle of a pendulum, the bending of a tuning fork, or the rotation of a clock movement. These systems and many others undergo harmonic oscillations. These oscillations can be too fast to see, at least under normal circumstances, or too slow to wait for or they can be any other frequency, high or low. No matter the frequency, however, they can all be described by the same differential equation. The differential equation is solved by the time-honored technique of guessing. A long time ago, someone guessed that the solution may be a sine function. It was an educated guess, because the motion of a mass oscillating on a spring resembles the motion of the shadow of a particle moving in uniform circular motion. So the idea of guessing a sine function seemed quite natural. In this case, a sine function with amplitude A and angular frequency omega. But if that's x, is its second derivative equal to minus k over m times x? Each clock, in its attempt to duplicate the cycles of nature, 
is a mere shadow of the cosmic clock. Just as uniform circular motion and simple harmonic motion shape up much the same in nature, the potential energy of harmonic motion can be visualized as a curve shaped like a bowl. Why this shape? Because of the force law and the definition of potential energy. The ball starts out with some potential energy. As it rolls toward the bottom, the potential energy changes to kinetic energy. As it rolls up the other side, the kinetic energy changes back into potential energy. Over time, there's a continual interchange between kinetic and potential energy. But even though both the potential energy and kinetic energy are always changing, the total energy is always constant. When any harmonic oscillator is disturbed, the disturbance produces a force that pushes it back to where it was. There, the force is zero, but inertia keeps it going until the reverse force stops it and pushes it back once again. This is the essence of harmonic motion. A simple harmonic oscillator. If it were really simple, it would go on forever. A perpetual motion machine. So what I want you to take away with you from this video of the mechanical universe is that there is some frequency of oscillation. And your textbook tells you that deriving that equation requires solving a second order differential equation which is beyond the scope of the text. That's what they did in that video. You don't have to know that for the AP exam, but for those of you who are in calculus, you might find that interesting. Here's the bottom line. There is an angular frequency which is equal to the square root of k over m. What we're more interested in is going to be the frequency with which we can watch the system moving back and forth, the number of vibrations per second. And that is the symbol f that we've been using, and that's equal to omega over 2 pi. And since the angular frequency for a simple harmonic oscillator is the square root of k over m, then we can rewrite the frequency that we measure, the number of cycles per second, in terms of this omega. It's going to be 1 over 2 pi times the square root of k over m. That's going to be a very important formula that you're going to need to memorize for a mass on a spring. What is the frequency of oscillation? It's 1 over 2 pi times the square root of the spring constant divided by the mass. In a similar fashion, the period of the simple harmonic oscillator, the amount of time for one vibration is equal to the reciprocal of the frequency. And so I can take the reciprocal of this equation and figure out the period. Likewise, that's going to be a very important formula that you're going to need to memorize as well. We now want to turn to some numerical problems to solve for the simple harmonic oscillator and these vibrating systems. There are three examples and we're going to solve them in turn.